This is Vin Armani of Cointext and Counter Markets, and you're listening to Milk from Coinspice. Coinspice.io. With C. Edward Kelso from Coinspice. Um, first off, <laughs> I'm just a huge fan. Um, you have uh, what I call a, a jeweler's eye, and there are very few artists that I can I can say that that kind of capture, um, especially with portraits, uh, that, that that capture the person. So I mean, it's it's kind of easier to I you know take a picture or whatever, uh, and and to represent that, but you there, there's something about the way you present these fellows and fellas um, that really uh, the the one that really struck me and I'm I'm jumping way ahead here <clears throat> before I even introduce you um, is the because I'm such a fan um, the the Vitalik Buterin um, oh, yeah. uh, uh, portrait I I I've seen you know he's he's an you know <laughs> not that I'm a supermodel but uh, he is definitely an odd duck. Uh, when it comes to uh, the presentation, um, how how he sort of the outward, you know, Vitalik's just Vitalik. There, there's yeah. a childish quality that you captured that you got out of him that uh, I've I've been kind of groping to explain to people. Anyway, long way to go to say thank you so much, man, for coming on. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. It was good to be here. Yeah, yeah. So you just finished up a um, in late uh, October. Um, a um, kind of a gallery presentation, a a a, a an art run, right? Um, exactly, uh, an exhibition of uh, of crypto inspired augmented reality paintings. Um, how, how did they How did they treat you? Uh, well, it was interesting. I mean, I've I stopped exhibiting in galleries, really commercial galleries, about three years ago, um, because partly because the work that I do with with tech and, and art collaboration, it's difficult to grasp in the quite conservative art world um, right. if they can if it is if it's not this kind of you know traditional or at least some kind of aesthetically pleasing uh, portrait or picture or or you know whatever it is that it's easy to understand. This is what paintings are, and this is what it does, and this is how you engage with it as a traditional painting. With doing the work that I do, I've struggled to find galleries um, since I've been working with tech to actually represent me and to represent me well. So that's one reason I, I use, but also because galleries take between 50 and 60% commission. Jesus. So it's a lot of money, you know. So I actually find that I, I'm able to explain my work better. I'm able to market it better. And, and so I hire the gallery space myself and... You know, it's a lot more work, uh, a huge investment as well. You know, I've got to, you know, invest a lot of money into, you know, everything rather than the gallery taking it uh, and, and taking the 50%. But at the end of the day, if it's done well, and with this last exhibition with the crypto, I mean, it was phenomenal. I mean, I was I was very worried because it was a, a almost a year's work of time put in. Um, and I, like I said before, I... I, I didn't know anything really about the crypto world. I didn't know anybody within it. I, I had no idea if there'd be anybody who would actually like what I was doing. I knew that the art world wouldn't, so it was putting all my eggs in one basket and just going like, oh, fuck it. You know, let's just see what happens. Awesome. Um, but it, it paid off. No, it was really good. No, it's <clears> – and <throat> it's it, one of the um, – kind of the, the, the retarded aspects of doing a podcast with an artist, a visual artist, is having to kind of struggle to explain – why this is so incredible um, it, when I'm going to point uh, our, uh, our listeners here to CoinSpice, I usually do a show notes um, presentation and also to, is it trevorjones.com? Yes, exactly. Uh, trevorjonesart.com. Trevorjonesart.com. Um, you, you do have to, I mean, obviously, and the you is the, uh, the listener here. You, you have to see this guys. Um, he's really done something you know, 
and disruptive is so cliche, but he really has done something that, that disrupts. <laughs> I think the very first thing that attracted to me, uh, me to you, is that I found, and I, I don't remember how I found you on YouTube. Is, is it right to describe that you snuck into the Scottish uh, National uh, Portrait? Uh, um, uh, in the, the National Portrait Gallery. Uh, yeah, it was the <laughs> recent most disruptive thing I've done. Um, actually, I'll, I'll kind of backtrack a little bit. It was, yeah, go. About, it was 2014. Uh, I'd been playing around with art and tech for since about 2011. Um, and, you know, like I said, the, the art world is actually, believe it or not, quite conservative, and especially Scotland is quite conservative in that sense in the art you know, industry, art environment. And so I was getting rejected year after year after year for this kind of Royal Scottish Academy open exhibition. And three years in a row, any artist can submit work. And, you know, mine just kept on re getting rejected. And they, they advertised as like the most, you know, contemporary, the most exciting, the most innovative paintings in Scotland today by, you know, the, contemporary artists and I'm going like what the fuck guys you know <laughs> nobody's doing yeah. what I'm doing yeah so uh after the third year of being rejected I said screw this you know I I snuck into the Rose Cottage Academy open exhibition the day before the open before the the, the big you know gala event I'm not going to say how because it can be <laughs> trouble. but uh, I took photographs of all the, the artwork on the walls there's about 400 contemporary artists that were accepted and I managed to augment. I went home that night and spent all, all night long augmenting 60 of them um, with my work. So you could scan the works. Well, what happened? I would actually augment all of them, but I rounded with my own images. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> then I counterfeited 30 tickets to the open, the opening night. You know, it's all kind of fancy dress, black tie, kilts. Uh -huh. And I invited 30 of my closest friends to come in. They had my app, and they were scanning all the artworks on the walls, and I was filming it all. And the responses were brilliant, you know, from, from visitors to a lot of the other artists there, um, you know, good and bad. Uh, so you <laughs> scan, the, scan the painting, and actually it was my painting on the wall inside that frame with a link to my website, a link to my Facebook page, and I was actually going to put a link to a, a, a shopping cart. You could purchase my painting through their painting. Yeah. And I thought, oh, God, you know, this is starting to cross some, some lines here legally, and I might get sued. So I, I took that one down. <laughs> but uh, the response was hilarious. I mean, I was shitting myself at first. You know, the next day I, I got emails from some fairly important artists in Scotland. Um, one was like the, the president of Visual Arts Scotland at the time. And he just said, started off with, well, it's, you know, it's some interesting technology you're using, Trevor. Um, uh, I can see how it could be used, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. However, and they just went on this long rant about it. <laughs> about me completely disrespecting a 188-year-old tradition of the Royal Scottish Academy, ah. uh, disrespecting, the artists, disrespecting the, the establishment. And it's like, you know, uh, so that, that, it was at that point that I thought, after I got over the initial fear of, you know, I'm sure. not going to jail, I'm not getting sued, <laughs> and I thought, this, this is, this, I'm onto something here. I'm, I'm ruffling some feathers. I'm shaking some things up, and this is what, you know, good art should do. Seriously, and uh, the the video again, I'll I'll uh, I'll embed in our in our show notes page. It's just badass, um, and we'll 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 get into the specifics here. But you actually have an, an app on both Google Play and uh, the uh, the iStore, right? Um, oh, sorry, uh, iStore, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, the Creative Muse, but it's without that second e. Yes, so Creative. V and then on to M U S E Creative V Muse. Coins by Okay, so C R E A T I V M U S E, and you download his app, <laughs> and you go to these <clears throat> these beautiful paintings that are you know you know hundreds of years old, and they they you know you can appreciate them for themselves, and then you kind of hold up his app, and your your phone scans it, and all of a sudden it turns into fucking Brian Armstrong giving you a dissertation here on uh, <laughs> on. On uh, on Bitcoin or whatever, it's just it's yeah. just an amazing idea. Um, and uh, <laughs> I when, when I saw it, I was just like, "What? What? That's crazy!" And I, I remember I hit you up. Uh, go ahead. You can go into the National Portrait Gallery now, uh, and yeah, scan the, the portraits of the the Scottish elite, the the kings, the queens, the philosophers, the, the entrepreneurs. You know, over the last you know few hundred years, 
and they can scan like you know Robbie Burns, you know the most famous god of them all, and he tra- morphs into uh, Roger Ver talking. Oh, that about- that blew me away. That blew me away. <laughs> <clears throat> that you found that blew me away because uh, uh, Burns and and Veer actually look alike. They do. It was crazy. It was. I mean, I was. Everybody sees that. I go like, what they look like they could actually be brothers. <laughs> <laughs> Just it's just so wild. Um, but anyway, I I I kind of wonder when art. I, I guess it's true with you know punk rock or or with really anything that becomes established. I think they forget, you know, kind of the roots. I mean, <clears throat> I don't know you personally, but artists are usually nuts, man. They're crazy. They do wild, fun things. That's the whole entire point of being an artist, man. I mean, you, I admit. Uh, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think of, of an example where an artist is not, you know, just balls out. Um, the, the ones that I love, anyway, um, just going out and doing their own thing. So, well, just great on you for doing that. Um, anyway, <laughs> you've got to see this video. Uh, he goes <laughs> and he sneaks in and he he, he gets all the, uh, the 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 paintings that he can. Like you said, he describes. He goes back and and augments them and then it turns into this this experience it's a it's a totally new way to experience art and in particular crypto so um <clears throat> now you have yeah, said yeah, turn, turn the, the the national Pacific gallery into a, a crypto resource center for anybody who wants to <laughs> and we can come in scan the works so there's 20 i think 28 30 30 paintings on the walls and the, the you know the most you know uh well-known established spectacular paintings in the National Portrait Gallery and find out all about crypto. Um, funny thing is, the, the, and I, I was kind of expecting the, the National Portrait Gallery, the National Gallery of Scotland has not contacted me uh, at all. And it's so crazy. What I've done, it's ridiculous. <laughs> I, I mean, this, <clears throat> this would get, you know, uh, so many people in just for the experience. Um, is, oh, totally. now, is, is there, is there um, plans because in the, in the United States, in the United States, we have to market everything and, and everything's got to be huge. So that's kind of where my mind goes almost immediately. Um, is there, are, 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 have any other galleries kind of picked up on this and went, this guy's a genius. We, we, we got to take this and bring this over here and do it. There, there are galleries, um, I think like Australia, um, the Sweden, um, Netherlands, there are some national galleries and science uh, museums that are using augmented reality to, to create, a really amazing experience and it brings in the kids you know i mean the, yeah. the, the, the these museums is they they really struggle to bring in the younger generations and so augmented reality is just a phenomenal way for them to to connect and engage with you know kids from you know four to to 16 and or older you know and and yet they don't i just don't understand why they don't come to me after you know four years of basically <laughs> poking the bear and uh, and you know sticking it to them, saying and just having a laugh with you know at them through my technology, um, turning the the National Gallery of Scotland to the Trevor Jones Art Solo Exhibition, and they don't come to me and say like you know how can we use this technology you know let's let's sit down and talk and how can we use it to better engage with a, a younger audience but you know what it's not my job to make That's their right. museum successful so it's my job to to poke the bear and 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 get a little bit of a you know, a bad boy reputation for pissing everybody off. <laughs> it's so dope. And it, 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 it ominously, you know, parallels Bitcoin and crypto itself yeah. uh, in terms of the, the reaction to it. There's kind of a, you know, the, the initial, well, it's all terrorists and drug dealers. And then, uh, <laughs> you know, oh, you know, this, this is going to overthrow everything. And I, there's probably a bit of worry that, you know, these, these beautiful uh, pieces that are, are meant to be, say, you know, who knows what they're meant to be, but they're meant to be, say, meditated upon that, you know, you got some, uh, some dude going in there and, and creating um, Pokemon with it as far as they're concerned and uh, yeah. turning it into, you know, kind of a cartoon. But I, that's, that's not at all. It, it, like if you had done that, I, I seriously, I wouldn't have you on, but I, I <laughs> <laughs> you, it's, so that much, be quite funny, but then, uh, <laughs> it's so much deeper it's it's uh okay and and it just because I'm, I'm all over the place because I'm, I'm such a fan here um you I, I think the one that grabbed everybody and where where people started pinging me and saying what, what, have you seen this council have you seen this guy was the um the uh McAfee uh on uh, the yeah. financial times 
that one is so friggin' deep. Like, even before you get to the augmented reality part of it, that's just a great fucking picture, man. Like, that's you, you nailed that, dude. It's an iconic photograph. I actually contacted the, um, the photographer and asked him if I could use it, and he was very generous. So, yeah, yeah, go ahead, you know, feel free to. Was that wire? You know, uh, uh, yes, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, obviously artists, artists rip off other artists all the time and, and, and phot photographers, but I think, sure. you know, for certain images, you know, and, I, and that one was, you know, it's a, a special image. I just thought, you know, I want to contact this guy. And then he said like, go ahead. Um, I'll, I'll have to send you the link to his, um, his website just so we can get a, a, a connection there. Oh, for but, sure. uh, it's a great, great image. And I mean, it, the funny thing is I, I wasn't a portrait painter. I've, been a, an abstract expressionist since I graduated from Edinburgh College of Art 10 years ago. And I only started painting portraits about two years ago um, as more of a, a, a publicity thing, you know, to with, I did like uh, on the run up to the presidential election with uh, Trump and Hillary, I painted 10 world leaders, uh, including Putin and uh, Theresa May and David Cameron, Tony Blair, Justin Trudeau. And I made them all out of rubbish and junk that I found in the streets and cigarette butts. And, and then I augmented them and I created these phenomenally hilarious videos of them just talking a whole lot of shit. Um, and you could scan them. Uh, so that was what kind of, I just started getting to painting portraits. But it was such as, you know, I mean, the, the response I got to that exhibition was, was massive. Um, and that was also the kind of led me off away from this kind of, you know, playing safe and, and being to a certain extent with my art and being more on the aesthetically pleasing side to actually doing something a bit more confrontational, a bit more political. Um, and that, yeah, I mean, that opened my eyes to the fact that I could actually create good work. And some, one person actually bought all 10 paintings, which was amazing. Um, and then I thought, well, geez, you know, there, there, there is a market, you know, you can be a, a controversial artist not even not accepted by the establishment to you know generally speaking and still be able to through the internet through social media find the market that's interested in your work um which then led me on to crypto and and it's been absolutely brilliant oh yeah. but i was gonna say with, ahead, with the john Mc, mcphee painting uh -huh. you know uh the fact that he actually saw it and tweeted it oh, uh, he did. Something like thirty thousand times that oh, that uh, the video is now you know on his tweet. So yeah, it's it's brilliant. And I always got in touch with uh, some of the pe some of his people, um, you know, for a little while. Uh, and actually, his uh, his wife Janice just bought a print of of it. So oh. that's also very cool. Yeah, that's their their. Um, it, 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 again, you have what I call the the jeweler's eye, and and um, I am. Um, in, in terms of, I don't know if it's portraiture, but sort of the, the realia type um, experience of painting, um, I, my, my go-to guy is, is, is Caravaggio because everything's yeah. so dynamic and so shadowy and so on. <clears throat> now, I, I don't think once my listeners go over, we'll see Caravaggio, but there's, there's something of that flavor. I, I'm terrible at describing this, obviously, but there's something of that flavor in your McAfee piece in that there are layers to it because you set him, it's, it's the, it's the picture of him with a, a, a revolver, a, sorry, a handgun pointed to his head. Um, he's pointing it to his own hand rather. And you, you, the, the, the backdrop is the financial times, which uh, I don't know if you know, uh, American listeners are, are too keen, but uh, the FT is the sort of salmon colored uh, financial paper really is sort of sets the standard for the financial world really all over the world. And yeah. um, uh, if you want to talk about legacy, institutional, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, finance, that's where you go. Oh, dumb question, but I have to ask it anyway. Was, was setting him on the Financial Times, was, was that on purpose? Yes, uh, uh, definitely. I mean, I, I subscribed to the Financial Times for a couple of months because I wanted to get um, articles about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency you know, good or bad, uh, positive or negative. It was just about having that as the, the background, the, the layer underneath about crypto articles. Um, and so I basically subscribed to it and just every day I'd, I'd get a new uh, copy and i just go through it and find something that was a, a, about Bitcoin. Um, usually it was like Jamie Dimon saying that shit, you know, it's, it's a, a <laughs> scheme or right, something right. like that. You know, or somebody say, you know, 
but the point was just to get that the Financial Times perspective on cryptocurrency and then this image of John with a gun to his head uh, looking directly at you and then the, the shadows just Coin kind of give it that, that almost like a, a three-dimensional uh, oh, view of him off, coming off the page or off the, the canvas. It is it is stunning piece of work. I mean, it, it, even if you're not into, say, the crypto side of things, you don't know who McAfee is, <clears throat> let's say you've never even heard of <laughs> the Financial Times, you just, it's, just, it's a piece that you can appreciate um, all, all by itself. It, it really is uh, uh, sublime. So, um, just, I'm going to the uh, the Edinburgh Edinburgh Art Fair is an annual event, so I'm I've got a stand for that next week actually, and I'm going to put that painting up as like the the feature piece and just to damn. blow everybody away and scare the kids and make some people cry. See what happens. <laughs> <laughs> They're all That's looking the for like you know, landscapes and sheep on hills in Scotland <laughs> and the guy playing bagpipes and a hairy coo, and then you got John McAfee basically about to commit suicide it's on top of the the ground. <laughs> should be fun <laughs> in, in between his cocaine bouts and uh <laughs> and he, um yeah just try to explain who mcafee is in, in three sentences i i double fucking dare you that's hilarious uh, well awesome 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 um I, I can't go any further without talking about your your architect the the architect uh, satoshi nakamoto you took dorian and um, <clears throat> similarly uh, placed him, uh, Dorian Nakamoto, the, the, uh, that, that, that itself is a whole story within a story within a story within a story. Uh, the poor bastard uh, in uh, my part of the world here in California in, in the U.S. who was uh, <laughs> outed Falsely by yeah, yeah. the nuts at Newsweek who can't get anything right. And they, <laughs> they put him all over, plastered this poor guy all over the place. Which, by, by the way, I don't know if you know this or how hip you are to this, but if if you do identify Satoshi Nakamoto, that dude's going to prison, right? Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, 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 make, make it to prison, they'll, they'll end up like Khashoggi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, yeah. And, and you think Julian Assange has got it bad in that Ecuadorian embassy. Uh, yeah. You find out who Satoshi is, and, and yeah, trust me, there's a lot of people that want that dude's ass. But, uh, <laughs> This this uh, this portrait that you did is um, again my my I have so many that, that I like, but if you can you can see the brush strokes, um, how you went into the hair, um, the glasses just kind of sit his his uh, his eyelids are actually heavy and puffy like yeah, God yeah. damn you know like he's been he's been pushed too far. But uh, um, how how did you find uh, uh, just did, did it just come about? with uh, finding Dorian in, in your just your normal crypto research? Um, yeah, uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, like I said, I, I'm not a techie. I'm not, I don't, I don't, I'm not a coder. I, I, you know, the only thing I, re I know a little bit about blockchain technology and decentralization. Uh -huh. I was thinking, you know, I was kind of exploring it last year around July, August, um, and again, like like we talked about already, I saw this connection between my tech art kind of disruptive qualities with with Bitcoin and 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 cryptocurrency. And so I started to research a little bit more. So I discovered just kind of fell into the whole the the rabbit's hole with crypto and the the community and following people on Twitter and and found out about Dorian Nakamoto and thought this would make you know a fantastic painting again on Financial Times yeah. and leaving a lot of you know parts of his face open so that you can actually see the Financial Times underneath it. Um, and actually that's a, a really interesting story. It's just like the, the power of social media is crazy. There's uh, on his right cheek or his left or right side, there's a, a, a woman who writes for the fin Financial Times uh, oh, see, called yeah. Marin and she so there's, you know, I don't know who she what she is, uh, but it was just completely coincidental. I put that article in there. I left her and exposed in his cheek and kind of out the side of his face. And on the last day of the exhibition at the Dundas Street Gallery this a couple of weeks ago, this woman came in and she looked at the portrait. Uh, she didn't understand the concept of Bitcoin or anything. I, I wasn't going to waste my time trying to explain <laughs> anything to her. That's old one, but she said I quite like the painting. She goes, "Oh, and that woman right there, uh, she just lives down the road." I'm like, going, are you serious? So I found out who she was, tweeted to her. She contacted me. 
Uh, she couldn't make the exhibition, but she came to my studio a couple days later, uh, bought a, a print, um, All right. and uh, and she ended up buying like a, a full size print of it. And then through that, she tweeted her studio visit, and a woman in London just contacted me and said she wants an actual um, commission of the the same painting, you know, the same idea of the painting as well. Uh -huh. So I mean, it's it's been ridiculously cool how. The tech side of this, you know, with the painting itself, but also with the the communication and the, the exposure to the outside world, uh, has just been em absolutely embraced. Like I, I had no idea that, that there would be, you know, had this kind of response to it. So, yeah, it's been it's been a pretty hectic few weeks. I bet, I bet it's just meta on top of meta on top of it. everything. Just keeps kind of circling back um, <clears throat> for us, for for enthusiasts, for guys and gals who are sort of knee deep in the uh, in the ecosystem here. Um, Bitcoin is peer to peer cash. So bringing people together, kind of flattening the, the, the world, uh, so to speak, and uh, putting us putting us all, you know, making it a little easier for us to communicate, uh, trade with each other. Um, that that kind of is, is baked into the whole idea. So um, what you're doing and how you're doing it, even if it's by accident. Uh, is, uh, mm. is 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 a complete and 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 utter. You know, it, it just it, it it meshes so well uh, with, yeah. with, with our community. Um, do you, do you hold any crypto? Do you, do you dabble in it at all? I, I, I did start, uh, in like I said, around kind of January, January sorry, about uh, July, August last year. And, uh, I ended up, you know, obviously a bit of a risk taker as you can tell. <laughs> so I, I, very quickly I got into the altcoins and the shit coins and, and I invested too much, you know, more money. I'm a, I'm an artist, you know, <laughs> it's not like, you know, money's coming all over right. the place, with right. me. but uh, so I invested. To, I mean, you know, immediately it's like you know it's going up. I'm making tons of money. It's like oh, like, this is amazing. I'm going to be a millionaire next week. And then uh, I got in the altcoins, and and very quickly just you know I I obviously found out that I'm I'm not that I'm too emotionally driven to mm. <laughs> to be a, a good investor uh, or at least a, a day trading. So I I lost a bunch and I made some back and I lost and I made some, and, and when I kind of broke even, uh, I said this is bullshit i need to start focusing on my painting rather than spending 24 hours on my phone got back into and that's when i said this is you know this was a crazy six months or five months of of jumping you know you know head first into this crazy world of, of crypto that i knew nothing about not too long before so it was um it opened my eyes up and i thought this is, would make a, an absolutely amazing exhibition and looking at not from kind of purely the the tech blockchain side and you know, there's some amazing artists doing some great work with with blockchain. I've I've seen a couple, you know, more kind of conceptual work, but right. more from the aesthetic route of of traditional paintings and kind of capturing the 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 human element of it, which is what I experienced for about five months of my heart going up and down and and <laughs> learning about the, the terminology and all the you know the the, the key figures in in the, the space. Um, so yeah, and but then actually now with the the success of this exhibition, this last ex exhibition, I sold um, a few paintings and a huge number of prints, and probably about seventy percent of the people, um, well, actually pretty much all of them are not from Scotland; they're overseas, Canada, U.S., Europe, you know, uh, and in a very short amount of time, you know, this amazingly successful show, people from all around the world buying my work, and that's. Uh <clears throat> wow, and I I think that those experiences and your your being intellectually and emotionally open to them uh, comes through in in your work. I think it's quite easy for an artist. Coinspice. Uh, to, uh, you know, God bless them. They 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 want to go on and make a buck uh, for a little while um, to kind of jump on the bandwagon, and you know <clears throat> they make a B and they put it I don't know on, on Madonna space or something. Um, that's that's all well and good. Your work is, 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 I, I can just, t like, as you're talking, I, I can see <laughs> those painful months of the up and down uh, 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 <laughs> markets, because we all went through it, you know, I mean, I, I felt yeah. like, a, yeah, everybody, all my friends were, oh, you're a freaking genius, you're making all this <laughs> money, you know, and I'm like, yeah, well, you know, if you understand, if you understand how the markets, <laughs> by January, <laughs> You know, good God, what have you done to my life? I hate you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I've been there. <laughs> yeah. So that's, uh, 
that, that definitely comes through. Um, I cannot recommend Trevor Jones's work um, more highly than than I have. I, I it's just it's one of those it's it's an experience which is which is so awesome. Um, obviously, it's travel cool. to Scotland. It's you know th- now you got a reason to go to Scotland if not just for the <laughs> Harry Potter museum. But <laughs> always, a, always a reason to go to Scotland. Uh, you know, not for the weather, but there's it's an amazing place. I mean, I, I came from originally from Canada, Western oh. Canada, but uh, I uh, I put on a backpack about 20 years ago, ended up in Scotland uh, about nine, 18 years ago, and just ended up staying. <laughs> so it's, uh, yeah, it's an amazing place. Weather is shit, but it's yeah. an amazing, amazing country. That's awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, um, I've appreciated uh, all of your time. Uh, the Creative Muse, uh, without that second E, uh, app, go grab that. Uh, get over to Trevor Jones Art uh, dot com. Um, buy some of his stuff. Uh, support his work. Um, the 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 next push for you by my guys will probably get you to uh, uh, download a wallet so you can take Bitcoin Cash. That's that's our uh, our, uh, our our favorite uh, coin of the realm here. Um, although cool. it, it may be a little uh, controversial as 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 we speak. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but, uh, um, yeah, get over there, buy his stuff, support this guy. I, I think he's going to, he single-handedly is bringing so many more people to crypto, uh, to see its beauty. It's, it's weirdness. Um, I should add, add one yeah. more quick thing go, uh, go. that I'm very, very happy about. Uh, I'm already thinking about, you know, my next step, my next exhibition, solo show, how many paints are going to be in it, you know, and it's going to be crypto. Uh, crypto inspired, of course, but it's funny that you brought up Caravaggio because I'm actually going to be incorporating some of the old Caravaggios into the crypto crypto eco uh, system, the space. So yeah, you'll actually see some Caravaggio figures, paintings in in a very new, exciting, crazy, disruptive contemporary form. Damn, I can't wait to see it. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Uh, well, thank you again uh, for coming on the show. Uh, really appreciate it. TrevorJonesArt.com. Get out there. Support him. Um, show him some love. Uh, this is a, a fantastic dude and uh, really an, an artist to, you know, he's just he's, he's just someone that will, will blow you away, I promise. Uh, thanks again, Trevor. I, I, I really appreciate it, man. It's my pleasure. Thanks so much for having me. Cheers, mate. Bye.